Taxation is theft. Please, at least leave us alone in our living room. My job is to find the truth. Double the taxes. I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value. Triple the taxes. This is an IRS agent's dream. If you think that the Capitol will ever treat us fairly, you are lying to yourself. Beautiful, lovely taxes. Uh -oh. <laughs> Sorry, but I don't do taxes. Did you see the memo about this? The government is a greedy piglet. Just leave us alone. Do you know what Ralph just said? The roads. <laughs> you boys like Mexico! I'm as bad as hell, and I'm not gonna take this anymore! Welcome back. Taxation is theft, and we have a really awesome show today. Uh, we have Jordan Page, a Liberty musician, and Angela Clemens, who's the president of Schaefer's Angels. Um, and they're going to tell us a really interesting story today about um, an interesting case of what would we call this injustice um, on the part. I would of call it a travesty of justice. There, there you a go. A complete absence of justice. Yeah. And um, this is this is on the part of the government. So you know, we we usually expect that government is there to protect us from. You know, as they say, if the government weren't here, there would be, you know, crazy tyrants coming along who would who would come like the mafia and force everybody into slavery and rob from everybody and do all this crazy stuff. And here we have an example where the government who's supposed to protect us from that is actually doing that. Um, so let's uh, let's let's get started, I guess. Um, uh, let's start from the beginning. What's the story here? Angela, you want to start? Sure. Well, Schaefer Cox is a political prisoner. He's being held in Terre Haute, Indiana, a secret black site prison called a CMU. Um, Schaefer has never committed a crime in his life. He was railroaded and set up by the uh, government. Um, he was uh, targeted for speaking up against corruption, and that's pretty much what got him on their radar. So um, how does this work? Because well, what what was he doing that that got him on their radar, exactly? The main thing is he was calling out corruption for child prostit prostitution and drug trafficking. Uh, when he ran for um, a public office, he started to learn a lot about the corruption in the government, so he started calling them out, and it was shortly after that time uh, he started, he was getting targeted. Um, they had sent in two FBI informants because they know Schaefer uh, never committed a crime. So they sent two informants in to try to convince him to violence, to commit some kind of act of violence. And through two years of being recorded when he didn't even know it, um, he never agreed to violence. And they even threatened his child at one time. And he still never agreed to violence. Uh, one of his famous quotes that uh, Jordan uses in his video is if they come for me, I'm not going to pull a Rambo, I'm going to pull a Gandhi. So that's kind of what got him on their radar. Nice. So um, it, it was there. It, it's weird that, you know, the, the FBI would go after someone like this. But it's also I mean, you know, we hear stories all the time about the FBI foils, uh, you know, some some terrorist plot with some terrorists who bought the explosives from the FBI. So, you know, they're like I can see how like the FBI is going there and trying to provoke um you know, some sort of violence that, that they can then act on and say, look, look what a marvelous job we've done and, and you should worship us. Um, it, but is there like, like there, like there has to be something that prompted this. Cause I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's so many people right now that are speaking out against um, the child trafficking. There were, um, there was a group of people, I think in, in Arizona who were, um, who were posting news about like some site that they found where it looked like a campsite where there was some child trafficking going on. Like, did he, did he target someone in specific? Did he have like, did he have information on Hillary Clinton or something like that? <laughs> um, you know, what, what, what made this such an unusual case that like he had to be targeted or was it just, you know, he pulled the short straw. You go ahead, Jordan. Well, I would say he started naming names, Dan. Um, he he did the one thing that you don't do when you're poking the bear is is to name names and those names need to be named, but he he did it. Now Schaefer is a very 
charismatic speaker and very inspiring. You know, the same kind of qualities that we all followed Ron Paul for. You know, Schaefer has all those things in spades, and he was, you know, in his mid 20s. And he was drawing huge crowds anywhere that he went to speak or to have meetings and was really just be, just doing an, an impeccable, amazing job at teaching the public about their rights, about the Constitution, about just the, the founding principles of liberty. And when he was going around campaigning uh, for office, he started, like Angela said, learning about this massive child trafficking ring happening in Alaska, going from the you know CPS and courts all the way up to the highest levels of government. And you know, if there's one thing I've learned, uh, you know, through watching you know the past couple of years unfold with all of the the WikiLeaks and PizzaGate information, it's that this is a very protected, very very dangerous uh, subject. And Schaefer, you know, obviously hit way too close to home, and probably hit the nail on the head with the people that he that he named, and they they came after him for it. I mean, it it was it was. Uh, they, they they were he was under surveillance for about two years before they they came down on him. He was actually targeted for assassination and both of those attempts failed. The third attempt where they actually arrested him could have been an assassination if the owner of the land where they had where they ambushed him hadn't happened upon the property right as it was all happening and acted as a witness. Um, they, they 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 didn't have anything on Schaefer. His case was actually a state case in Alaska. And the case was thrown out for lack of evidence. So that there tells you that there was no case. That like the charges were completely bogus, entirely fabricated by the state. And when uh, after it was after it was thrown out, the the federal government came in and superseded its jurisdiction. It doesn't have the jurisdiction under the Constitution to try people for these types of things. And they um, they but they illegally tried him again. They, they couldn't find a federal judge to even listen to this garbage. So they brought an old, older judge out of retirement, who like an older guy who's hard of hearing. He refused to allow the tapes that prove Schaefer's innocence to be played in court. The prosecution withheld a mountain of exculpatory evidence, evidence that would have set him free. They withheld that from trial. It was a kangaroo court. They charged him with conspiracy to murder federal agents. Uh, which was a, a complete fabrication. There is no evidence of that whatsoever. And a uh, jury bought it somehow, and uh, they gave him 26 years. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's a, an absolute nightmare of a story. And this man is a, is a young man, a Christian, a husband, a father. And they moved him, they moved his trial from Alaska, where where the case was, down to Washington so that none of the none of the witnesses in his case could testify on his behalf. He got railroaded at every turn. And this guy is, is is one of our people. He's a liberty person. He's a Ron Paul liberty guy. And he was doing nothing different than anybody else at, that was out there in the Ron Paul revolution. And he was he's just just an amazing person. So they start flipping him around to different prisons and they they send him in the end right now he's at the the communication management unit CMU in Terre Haute, Indiana, which is rated as one of the top 10 worst prisons in the world. It's a 98%, I believe 98% uh, radical Muslim terrorist population and like five other guys, <laughs> you know, and Schaefer's wow. one of those. There have been, uh, you know, and, and the Christians in the prison are being targeted. They're being martyred. Uh, there, was a, there was a murder that happened right in front of Schaefer where one of his, one of his friends, one of his very few allies in the prison was was murdered and, and, and executed at his head, decapitated right in front of Schaefer back in November, and the prison tried to cover that up. And another prisoner in the same incident was stabbed 12 times, and the guards did nothing. They went and hid. They locked themselves in a closet and didn't do anything to help, and they waited for the SWAT team to show up, which took like 15 minutes. And meanwhile, this guy has his hands tied behind his back and gets his head cut off. So like, the, 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 there's gross human rights abuses happening in this prison where Schaefer is, you know, these guys are, are, are all suffering from starvation-related diseases. They have scurvy and other, other starvation-related diseases. They're not getting any nourishment. Uh, it's, it's, just, it's, it's just it's hell on earth, and he doesn't belong there. You know, I mean, not, really nobody in the, anywhere belongs in this place. This, pl this is the kind of prison that isn't even approved by Congress. It's off the books. So anything, can, anything goes. And he, he's been serving eight, he served eight years now 
of a 26-year sentence. And so recently, last month in February, the judge in the case, one of the judges in the case, ruled that all the evidence the prosecution withheld needed to be released. And this information, this evidence, can easily set Schaefer free. His solicitation charge was dropped back in uh, August of 2017. And we are, it, it's our hope that by, by spreading this song and video and this marketing campaign to, to make people aware of Schaefer's name, who he is, what he stands for, and what he's been through, that will get public support for that process to happen quicker and to get him the hell out of there. I mean, that, that is essentially, this is an innocent man. Any way you cut this case, he's an innocent man in, in, the, in, in the worst, one of the worst prisons in the world, right here in the United States, you know, facing, you know, religious persecution in, in where, where he's at. It, I mean, it, it's a fight for their lives. Um, I, I was introduced to this case back in June of last year uh, at an event I was at. Someone gave me, a, 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 a who, man who's become a friend of mine, but was an acquaintance then, gave me a, a copy of Schaefer's book of, of song lyrics and poetry uh, called The Lost Lyrics of Schaefer Cox. And I read this book and just had a profound experience reading it and you know, wanted to get involved in some way. So I contacted a, a friend I knew who was in touch with Schaefer and she put me in touch with Angela and Schaefer's Angels, and they helped to orchestrate the recording of, of, of a song and, and, and the filming of the video. Um, I wrote the song after I learned about the murders that had happened right in front of Schaefer and what he was going through. Uh, it's, it's, all, it's very emotional, you know. It, it, it's, it, it's, you know, you carry a heavy burden when you know this information. And not that I you know, want to burden everyone's souls with this, but, it, but people need to know. I mean, that this has to stop. It need, that, that this prison needs to be shut down, number one. And Schaefer needs to be set free. I mean, he is an innocent man. And this recent ruling by the judge is like this huge ray of hope. And so, um, so I mean, it's a, it's a real tangible shot at getting him out of there in the very near future. And so the song and video are, were made for that purpose. Awesome. Well, um, with that, do you want to you go ahead and play this uh, video now? Sure, yeah. The song is called uh, The Persecution of Schaefer Cox. I, I, I couldn't think of a better word to describe what has happened to him because he was targeted for what he was saying. He was targeted for, his, for what he believed and what he stood for and, and, was, and has been persecuted ever since, you know, for the, for the last eight years. And so we released a song on Sunday, March 10th, which was the anniversary of his unlawful arrest. And, uh, and the video will speak for itself in the song. Awesome. All right, let's, uh, let's start this up.
don't you see? Cause I was made for greater things Dungeons have made many kings One day soon Wow, that's uh, that was a really awesome video. Um, cinematography and everything. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I guess you know what's what's there. You know what's the next move? What can we do to to help this and and you know make it right? It sounds like you know there's some there's some evidence that's been released now. Is that all of the evidence? that's that you mentioned the exculpatory evidence is there anything anything else you're still looking for and is that enough to to really make this happen and, and get him out well it's it that's an ongoing case um we're trying to force the fbi to release the documents and out of over 500 pages they're on page 200 and something so it takes um continuous legal work and action on that so you know the website freeshafer.com um, donations always help um, for his legal defense writing Schaefer a letter he enjoys receiving letters um, con calling uh, the senator or governor also is good um, and we're really looking for a filmmaker I'd love to find someone who is willing to make a movie about Schaefer awesome yeah, Dan, going, sending people to freeshaper.com is the number one thing we're trying to accomplish right now because that that gives people, you know, who, who may not be familiar with this case but, but are watching this and may become interested, it helps them to really just put two and two together. There's, there's a couple different uh, short documentaries on there that really spell everything out. Th that music video you, you, you just saw is there as well as links to buy the song. The song itself is... Uh, was co-authored by Schaefer. I took several lines from his uh, book and put them into the song as a way to honor him and also to incorporate his personal narrative into the narrative of the song. And so the way I've set it up is that 50% of all of the sales of the song are going to go right to the foundation. And the foundation is what pays for his legal expenses. And that's what needs to be done. So so he has four pe four pending uh, motions right now that and, and all of that legal work needs to be paid for and we the foundation needs more more donors to, to become uh, to become pledges and so um, so we want to we want to raise awareness and raise public support for him make calls to, like like she said to, to the the Indiana senators and governor and, um, and 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 just come together as a people and agree that this is wrong and that this man should be set free. I mean, it's, it's plain as day, once you become familiar with the case and with the evidence, what happened here, and that they're just trying to shut him up and th put him in a place where he would likely get killed so that it would silence him forever. But he has survived, and, you know, he survived with his soul intact. Um, you know, I got a chance to talk to Schaefer for the first time about three weeks ago, and he called me, and uh, you know we had a 15-minute phone call that was heavily monitored, of course, and we've been emailing for about two months. And he, uh, you know, I, I got a chance to play him the song uh, with my guitar, just sang it to him over the phone, and he could hear my kids playing in the background. And he said to me after the call, after I finished, that um, that he had lost the ability to cry, you know, years ago. And it was just something that had died in him. And that listening to this song and hearing my kids playing, um, just the sound of their laughter and the song like made him feel like he could cry again, you know, reconnecting into that part of his humanity. And then it reminded him that there was an, a world out beyond those cold prison walls. Um, you know, this is, this is one of our people. I mean, if you're, if you're a liberty person, if you believe in freedom, if you were part of the Ron Paul movement or part of any any movement that's for individual liberty and limited government this is this is your brother 
You know, he's no different than you. You know, uh, myself included, there's a lot of people way more radical than Schaefer. And, you know, Schaefer, Schaefer's message was, was very, you know, um, non-radical, but very common sense. And, and he, was, he was targeted because, because he, was being too, he was getting too successful. Very, very charismatic, brilliant man, and he needs to be set free. And we need everyone's help. And, and those legal costs need to be paid for to facilitate that process. So go to freeshafer.com and buy the song. You can, you can get it on iTunes. You can get it on Google Play, on Amazon, CD Baby, anywhere that you can download music from, you can get it. I mean, I, I would ask people not to just stream it on Spotify. That doesn't help anything. Um, you know, stream it on Spotify if you've already bought it. You know, I'm going to be donating uh, a portion of my proceeds to this as well. But 50% of the of the sales of the song go right to the foundation. So that that's what people can do. You know, besides you know calling the the, the Indiana governor and and senators and congressmen to, to let them know that these gross human rights violations are happening in this awful awful prison that's in their state. Right. So now, if uh, if you're on iTunes or one of those platforms and you want to find the song, uh, what do you look for? You can just look for my name, Jordan Page, and you'll find all the songs that, that I've and albums that I've released. But if you but you could also search for the persecution of Schaefer Cox. Um, I know it's a long song title, but you know right. whatever. <laughs> and um, but yeah, just look look up Jordan Page. You can you can Google Jordan Page music. You can go to jordanpagemusic.com, and there's links to all my songs there. I mean, everything you need to find is there too. But I would encourage people to first go to freeshafer.com because everything about Schaefer's case and there is there, and there are links there, and documentaries there, and the videos there. Awesome. So um, I, I want to talk about how you know there's there's this um, there's this mentality in America that you know whenever whenever you know it doesn't matter if it's something big or something small um when the police are stopping you and asking you questions it's always you know comply go along with it answer all the questions if you have nothing to fear you know nothing to hide you know you have nothing to fear um but here you know we have an exact you know a really good example of why that's not the case like yeah you might get your day in court but how much is that going to cost and you're never going to get repaid for any of that um you know, it's like, uh, I guess with civil cases, people expect that, you know, okay, well, if at least when you win, you get the other side to pay for your legal expenses, but that doesn't happen in a criminal trial. Like when you're, you're spending tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars sometime, um, to just keep yourself out of prison. And when you win, you get nothing back. You just, you just, you know, you get the rest of your life out of jail unless they come after you again. But it's, it's, um, you know, you've already spent that much time in jail. You've already spent that much money on legal expenses. Um, and so this is really, this is, it's a really difficult issue. And, you know, we shouldn't have to, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about how expensive health care is, um, you know, and, and, and all this other stuff. And no one really talks about, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, not to say that healthcare isn't important, but I mean, look at how compare compare having like okay you've you've got some illness and you need to take some medication for the next 20 years and you're you're bitching about having to pay a lot of money for that but picture like at least you're alive at least you're you're not in some cell constantly fearing for your life um sure compared to like you know where and this isn't even a guarantee you know it's it's costing him a lot of money to to it's costing you and everybody who's who's contributing to this a lot of money to try to get him out but it's like it's like that's not even a guarantee at the end of the day we could spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on this and you know hopefully hopefully he will get out um but it's it's, you know, I mean, I guess with medicine, medicine is not a guarantee either, but it's, I don't know, this is just something that it's, it's really, it's really difficult to even think about. Like, imagine your, yourself in that position. What do you do? And how do you, how do you stay sane? I mean, like, you know, people see these videos of, of someone getting arrested and they start, they start screaming and fighting and, you know, like they, that's a natural reaction. Like it's, it's not it's not, like that's an instinctual response it's not in our nature to be to be bound against our will especially when you know i maybe if you've committed a crime and you see it coming and it's like okay well i guess you know i murdered somebody and whatever but it's like 
if you know you're wrong and you're afraid of what they're going to do to you and you know that you know they're they're working with people who are you know they they have no intent to give you a fair trial they have no intent to ever let you free and you're afraid of that you're you know you're going to resist and i don't i don't know exactly in Schaefer's case but like when you see that this is a possible outcome like i when i watch a video of someone getting arrested for a broken tail light anything i can totally understand where they want to completely resist or run or fight or whatever because today we don't know what's going to happen we could end up like Schaefer Cox over over anything. We we could we could have said somebody's name and and exposed something. Maybe we didn't do it on purpose. Maybe we did it on accident. Uh, maybe we were accidentally filming something with our phone and we in the background we happened to get a picture of somebody who wasn't supposed to be there and that somebody is connected to somebody powerful and and you know they want to they want to kill us or imprison us over that video or somehow make it disappear. Um, we don't know. It's it's really um it's i mean it's a difficult subject to think about and i know most people don't want to and that's why they say like oh well you know just just comply you'll get your day in court i don't see it like that no the criminal injustice system is set up against the common man it's a massive money-making scam that is is it's it's the state versus the people in that and and there there really there's very little there's very few ways to win unless you really understand the difference between jurisdictions and types of law. And as, but as, as, as soon as you recognize like the authority of the of of the courts to over you, you've basically lost, you know. And and but you know, Schaefer Schaefer was standing on principle. He was standing up, and and he you know he and he believed and he still believes in his principles. But in this case, you know, the the, the court system was rigged against him. I mean, the original case, as I mentioned earlier, was a state case, and it was thrown out for lack of evidence. That's, that, should, that should give everybody their first clue. And then the feds came in with their superior force and tried him again, just despite having no jurisdiction to do so and having no evidence. They wanted to get rid of him, and they basically just did what they wanted to do, and he was, and he was yeah, out. I usually, I usually say that um, even the prosecution knew he was innocent, and that's why they hid evidence. Um, but I agree with what you're saying. Um, if if we had three million or one million or five hundred thousand people willing to stand up for for their neighbor uh, uh, against injustice, we may not have two and a half million people in prison. Um, and one thing Schaefer was trying to create there in Alaska was called the Liberty Bell system, and the the government there is pretty corrupt, so. Uh, it was a system where you could call and 10 people would show up with their phones if, if somebody was getting arrested or harassed by an officer. Um, and so that was one thing that he was trying to get practical examples to to not comply and to hold people account, the authorities accountable. So. Wow. Yeah. And that's so what was let's talk about jurisdiction for a minute, because most people. Uh, well, let me, let me not generalize. I know a lot of people that I've talked to think that the federal government is just kind of like a bigger jurisdiction than what the states have, and they don't recognize, um, you know, I think, Jordan, you, you touched on this a little bit, like certain crimes, murder, theft, um, you know, I mean, they, they make special exceptions for like bank robbery and, and the post service, but for the most part, those those crimes cannot be prosecuted in a federal court because a federal court has no jurisdiction for that. Those all have to be tried at the, at the state level. That was an issue with um, JFK's murder uh, where that was supposed to be, the investigation was supposed to be done by, uh, by the state and the feds just didn't want that to happen for, you know, whatever reason, conspiracy or not. Um, the law was that that would be done by the state coroner or the county coroner. So, what how did this um you know what was he actually charged with in the federal case and could he could he have brought up a jurisdiction issue or did they find some some bullshit reason to you know to have an actual you know charge that there was federal jurisdiction well they they weren't able to show any jurisdiction they just create if they don't have something they'll create something they'll just write up a piece of paper and uh, pretend like they're the authority, um, and and there's there's not enough people who care or know 
to hold them accountable. Uh, one thing was what, after the state case was thrown out, um, supposedly there was what they called it um, was the third superseding indictment that is supposed to be signed by the grand juror. And to this date, nobody can find it. Nobody can find the, the actual indictment. <laughs> and that fact alone um, could set him free. But, Interesting. Um, yeah. So it's just, I think people are, are quiet and scared. And I think they, so, they worship their government. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> one, of the, one of the probably um, most difficult things that I deal with is, is you know, uh, talking to people who just absolutely worship the government. Um, yeah. but so, you and know, most of them do it. Most, most of them will worship the government above any God they claim to serve. Right. So, and they don't even like, know that they're doing it, for, which, yeah, for example, you know, Christian, um, if we, we say we don't believe in murder and, and we don't believe in murdering babies, but we pay taxes and they use our taxes to fund that. Right. So that's an example of how. Most people will obey their government of any God they claim to have. Right. And it's, it's, you know, I bring this up all the time when I'm going on my taxationist theft rants. Um, you know, we, we might, even if you love paying taxes, even if you love the programs that, you know, government does for you, you're, you're giving them money to, to do what they've proven over and over again they will continue to do, which is to bomb innocent children in in countries that we have no business being in um mm -hmm. and it's you know it's right. it's not just like oops that happened once it'll never happen again it's always happening we know that they're they're the biggest importer of drugs into the united states um we, we know they're doing business with the mexican like we know like we know all of this information and Yet somehow, you know, if you just worship the government, you're not going to see that. But so so with this case, so you talked about, you know, not having the actual indictment could set him free. But that alone is a big struggle because you need to figure out now, how do you get that in front of the right judge? And how do you how do you actually get, you know, that's going to be a struggle, too. Right. It's not like if you have, you know, if you're being charged with something, obviously the government's going to make sure they have space in the courtroom to hear your case and, you know, ultimately get you sent to prison. But to, to get in some sort of document like this, where, you know, where it's going to say like, Hey, we're challenging a previous case where it's, it's sort of an appeal, I guess. What's, what's the process for that? And what's the likelihood of that happening? What kind of challenges are, are in the way? Well, the biggest challenge is the corrupt court. And when, you know, when you're in the court, the judge, the prosecutor, and, you know, the public defenders, they're all being paid by the same people. So the biggest challenge, in my opinion, is the corrupt, the whole corrupt system. And I don't actually know all of the process. I, I'm not a paralegal, so I don't know the, the process that we're talking about. Okay. So... Um, I guess let's let's talk about this then, um, because this is, you know, we we talk about how much we're sick of the government stealing from us, how how we're sick of them forcing us to to do things that we don't agree with. Um, and one of the things, and this was kind of like when I started, when I started seeing how fake the government was and how how everything is basically backed by fake threats. Um, one of the first things that I saw was a jury duty notice that, you know, everybody's telling me, oh, if you don't show up, they're going to charge you $10,000 and all this other stuff. And I, I started, I actually looked at this notice and I read all the fine print and it actually, like, they imply that I'm going to have to pay $10,000, but they even admit in their own, in their own documents that they'll have to go through this whole process in order for that to actually happen. And you know, they're not going to, they're not going to do all that. It's just an empty threat to get you to show up. And so when I first saw that, I was like, man, screw this system. Like, I'm not going to go like, I'm, I'm just going to like object and not go. But at the same time, now you kind of, you kind of look at, um, you know, jury nullification and, and how much power the juror has. And it's like, wait a minute, 
let's let, let me not let me not skip out on let me actually do this because you know like you said like the the jury is such an important part of the whole process that's like the one thing that the government doesn't have control over they can make as many laws as they want they can have as many as many police out there arresting people for whatever they want and they can have as many judges who are who are corrupt who don't care who are just throwing everybody in prison but if all the jurors are there saying not guilty not guilty not guilty their whole racket is over they have they have nothing right that's true it's the achilles heel of the whole system and that, that's that's why groups like fija fully informed jury association are so important I've got a lot of friends in, in Fijo who are doing amazing work all over the country, educating potential jurors outside of courthouses. A lot of people end up getting arrested for jury tampering be, because they're telling jurors the truth. Um, ju- you know, most judges are, are withholding this information from jurors that they not only have the responsibility to hear the facts of the case, but to, but to judge the merit of the law itself that's in question. And so the more t- you're right, the more times they find people not guilty for victimless crimes, the more legal precedent is set to wipe those laws completely out anyway. I mean, a, a, an unjust law is no law at all. And so it's, it's null and void and of no force, as Jefferson said. So, I mean, I, 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 if, if we had some fully, form, fully informed jurors on Schaefer Cox's jury, there would have been a much different uh, outcome. But that, that shows the level of manipulation and brainwashing and the success of the state's, uh, you know, indoctrination programs on the general public. Right. Yeah. And I mean, even, you know, it's funny, they call it jury tampering. Um, you know, trying to, trying to give them the truth. It's kind of like, you know, they, they absolutely hate if they're arresting one person, they hate anybody that's standing around filming it. Cause you know, half the times the cop just want to bash their skull in and they don't want that on camera. Like, Oh, I have to act professional. There's a camera here. Um, you know, the 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 courts are people don't think about it. like they, they think the courts are the fair part of government. Um, they don't realize that, you know, court judges are just like cops. They they can break the law and they can do all kinds of stuff, too. And, you know, you think like, oh, but it's in a safe. It's in a it's in a public space. Everyone gets a, a fair public trial. It's you know, anyone can watch what's going on. Well, not necessarily one because most of the people there don't understand what's going on. They don't understand the legalese that's being used to kind of hide stuff from people. But on top of that, most places don't allow cameras in the courtroom. And you have to wonder why, like this is supposed to be, you know, public. Sometimes we see they have their own security cameras and sometimes they'll release that stuff, especially when it makes the defendant look, you know, bad. Um, But it's, it's, uh, you know, this, that's not, that's not a fair public trial if it's in secrecy. I mean, how big are these courtrooms? We've got millions of people in this country, and only 50 that can fit into the actual courtroom are, are allowed to see it. Um, that's, you know, that's completely wrong. I, th- I think that's one reason that they try to uh, torture people into taking plea deals um, instead of because they can at least fill their prison bed um, with a plea deal. And in a court trial, they, um, you know, there's a few checks and balances. Right. Well, I think it's also just to expedite expedite their whole system. I mean, why go through that process if they don't have to? But yeah, it's it's just another level of corruption. I mean, they've got, you know, they'll they'll come in and they'll say, yeah. you know, to somebody who's, I I talk about this all the time. The the, you know, for somebody who doesn't have the money for a real lawyer. You get a public defender. The public defender works for the the district attorney, for the prosecutor. Um, you know, there. I mean, sometimes you get like a regular attorney who just wants some some extra, you know, points with the court, so so he'll take a public case uh, pro bono. But you know, for the most part, it's like the prosecutor. Like, I want to throw this guy in prison. Oh, damn! This law says I need to give him an attorney to defend himself with. Let me just find the worst attorney or or the the newest attorney out of law school who doesn't know what he's doing and let me put him on the case and let me give him 50 cases so that he doesn't have the time to even research them (laughs) and it's like this is how that's manipulated so yeah you get an attorney but it's like is that really worth anything that and most of the times those attorneys will tell you yeah uh, i think you should just plead guilty to this case because i don't know how to help you fight it (laughs) or i don't have the time for it it's 
Schaefer's been pretty blessed um, this time uh, that he does have a good public defender. He, the public defender is the one that got the solicitation charge dropped in 15 minutes. All he had was 15 minutes before the uh, three panel judges. So, so that is pretty good, and I've been impressed with him. Awesome. But yeah, he doesn't have time to investigate. Um, you know, he Schaefer has to pay for anybody to investigate the case and dig into you know two, over two terabytes of data um, on his wow. discovery evidence. So, and uh, one thing that the prosecutor said at his uh, trial and sentencing was that Schaefer believes God's law is above man's law and is beyond rehabilitation and deserves a longer prison sentence. So that's another, just shows another level of corruption. Wow. That's, um... Makes you rethink things. Yeah. You know, <laughs> make, make, makes you put, put things into, into perspective. And again, I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate something that Schaefer... I'll bet a lot of people that watch this show, if you're watching a show called Taxation is Theft, <laughs> you probably you probably are of a certain mindset and you've and you've probably been the the person ruining Thanksgiving dinner, you know, and you're probably the you know, that that member of your family or your friend circle who's always talking about, you know, politics and, and all the horrible things that are going on in the world. You know, Schaefer was like and still is like a ray of hope. You know, he, he's, he's, um, he's a natural leader and, and just has that, he has that special something like Ron Paul did. He's, and he's one of our people. He doesn't belong there. He's innocent. And I encourage people to go to freeshaper.com, watch the documentaries that are there. It, it, it just spells it all out. It's so easy to see. And, and my, our hope is that you will be moved enough to join the, the email list and get regular updates from Schaefer and his letters from prison and that you'll be moved to to donate toward these legal costs that, that that the foundation has to fight this case for him. So so freeshaper.com, check it out. Awesome. Um, I'll put the links to all those um, in the uh, in the uh, description once once we're done with the stream. Um, so man, I mean, like you, you just think about this and like. It's, uh, <laughs> this is like, this was honestly one of the things that, um, you know, when I kind of came to the Liberty Movement, it was like, you know, I was, I grew up in California, everything's all rainbows and sunshine and everything. And, you know, uh, you know, oh, taxes. Okay. That's the worst of it. And then I started kind of going down the rabbit hole and, you know, I saw so many of these cases, um, I started seeing, you know, this was when like Rodney King was like, you know, oh, that's that's the only that's the only example of of, you know, police violence against an an unarmed, you know, defenseless citizen. And that was just a rare case. And now it's like everybody has cameras and we're seeing that. No, this is this is everywhere. And it's I don't know if it's just that there's there's more of it out there now. I'm sure that's got a big part of it. But as I kind of like went down the rabbit hole and I started seeing all of this stuff, it's, it's almost kind of depressing because it's like, there's so much going on. There's so much crime being done by the government or by the government's employees. And like, you can believe whatever you want. Like you can believe government is, you know, yeah, if they only had the right people working for them, it would be a great organization. Fine. If that's what you want to believe, but that's not what's going on. And what do we do about all of this all of this corruption. It's insane. I mean, you know, if we get Schaefer out today, what's going to, what's going to stop it from happening again tomorrow? That's quite a question, Dan. I mean, not, not, nothing, nothing's going to stop it from happening tomorrow, but we, we get Schaefer out and then Schaefer can become, an even more powerful voice having gone through what he's gone through and be an advocate for other prisoners. He's not the only political prisoner out there that, that that's, that's in there for Liberty causes. I mean, there, there's a, there's a lot of guys that are, that are in there, you know, I mean, Ross Ulbricht, Todd Angle, 
I mean, there's there, there's there's like a whole list of, of of prisoners that I have that that you know need need support too. But Schaefer is this is this really unique case of of a of a person who's just a natural leader who who you know was was struck down for standing for something, and and he he pushed the wrong button. But he's you know Sch- Schaefer's also learned a lot from this and has learned how to navigate this system a lot better. Than beforehand, you know, he might have done things a lot differently had he had had he had had this knowledge that he has now going into it. Um, education is like the main thing, buddy. Like people have to get educated on what's really happening in this country and in the world. Um, it's it's absolutely insane what's going on, and and most people are completely oblivious. So the first, like, as 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 a musician and an activist and as a public person, m- my personal modus operandi has always been to get just to get people to look at the information just to get them to care you got to start there apathy is our greatest enemy because the public have no idea how much power they actually hold you know everyone else i mean i wrote a song about this called liberty and then the 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 tagline was what can one man do alone this was the question i kept getting from people all over the country as i would tour and play concerts well, what can I do? I'm just one person. I mean, these are people would say to me, "Well, I'm just one person. I'm I'm doing something. If we're all just one one person, everybody's one person, all doing something, then a whole lot gets done. Right. So everybody has to do their part and and stand up for 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 the other guy. You know, I mean, just imagine if it was you, like you said. Imagine if it was you. Wouldn't you want people doing radio shows on your behalf? Wouldn't you want somebody to write a song about you? And try to raise money for your defense if you had none. I mean, wouldn't you? So, this this is a guy that I would I would venture to say most of your most of your audience probably shares ninety five percent of the of the of his beliefs, and and he was put away for those beliefs. So, it's all it's all about coming together so, as know, a people and standing for and standing for one of our you know fallen brothers, and we need to get him out. Yeah. Yeah. If, um... You know, if 200,000 or 1 million or 3 million people um, could stand in unity um, against tyranny and just and corruption, we would probably see a difference. Um, and you, you said earlier that it goes so much against our nature to be locked in a cell, and it does. It's human torture, this prison. Um, but I also think it goes against our nature to, to be... Um, sadistically in control of another human being as these officers and um, corrupt guards are. It's there. They've sold their nature out as well. And Schaefer talks about that some too, is um, we can't be fully human if we're trying to control another person. So in, in that manner. Yeah, that's, that's actually a really good point that, um, you know, that you made about, being put into a cell and confined as a form of torture. I mean, it's, I've, I've been in a small cell before for only three or four days. And the stuff that starts going through your mind, like, you know, there, like that really is in itself a form of torture, especially, you know, if you're put into, you know, whatever environment you're in, like, you know, okay, yeah, our officers didn't didn't beat the crap out of this guy, but we stuck him in a, a cage with a bunch of other, you know, really insane criminals who were willing to, and uh, it it just happened. But it's not our fault. Uh, we didn't we didn't put him in the. You know, it's not our fault he got arrested and charged. And and yeah, you're you know you're you're absolutely right with that. This is like it's a form of torture that. You know, whether you're letting someone else do it and you're just putting them in that position or whether it's just the, the fact of being in the cell where where, you know, you're you're you start to lose your mind because you have no human interaction. You're you're in a very constricted place. Um, you get claustrophobic. You're you know, all this stuff going on. It's you know, there like it. And, you know, you look at it on its face and it's like, oh, no, this isn't torture. He's just sitting in a, in a cell. That's what happens when you go to prison. But it's like. You know, there there was a form of torture that was used where, you know, what you you hang somebody by their by their arms and you just drip water on their forehead like once every couple seconds. And that's it. 
and that's considered a form of torture even though you're just dripping water on their head what's the big deal what's what's the problem with that um it causes sleep deprivation it causes you to lose your mind and go insane and it's 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 torture it's recognized as torture but somehow putting someone in a cage um when you know when they when you know that they know that they've done nothing wrong is that really is i mean you know close your eyes and try to picture yourself in that situation and try to picture yourself there for more than 30 minutes and i i bet you can't like even just imagining it is is horrifying um well this prison this cmu prison is they have just outright tortures, not just the torture of being in a cell. And one time Schaefer was in solitary so long, he forgot what a human face looks like. Um, he's been, they, they four point shackle these guys. This, this CMU prisons um, took the place of Guantanamo Bay. So there's been reports that they're chained in awkward positions for hours and hours, um, humiliated, um, just, you know, thrown in a cell naked. And, and the fact that he can never even hug his mother when you, you know, to go years and years and years, never hugging a loved one, that is human torture. In, in addition to solitary confinement or um, the sale or, you know, starving to death <laughs> through um, diseases like scurvy and beriberi, um, there's a lot of forms of torture there. And, and the whole prison is modeled after Chinese thought reform, which is torture as well. Wow. So, well, Dan, Dan, we, Dan, we really appreciate the the ability to come on here and and tell this story, man. And we just hope that that the people that are watching and listening at home will, you know, be be moved to to take part in it and and help to build a movement to get Schaefer and and other political prisoners out. So we really appreciate the the the, the platform. Absolutely. So um, before we go, I just wanted to give you another opportunity uh, for anybody listening to uh, to give those websites again. If you can go here and make a donation, it's really going to help this. I mean, this is, you know, man, I wish we could help everybody. But this is this is a really important case and we really need to help this cause um, because, you know, this is this is what it's it's extremely high profile this is this is a very you know powerful leading activist that you know if he were out could be helping to change things so much he could be you know he he could get back to work in you know changing things in in being active and and leading um leading us all to kind of you know learn and grow and and fight the system and turn you know free the country again so, you know, this is a really, really important case. So if you can, head over to the site and make a donation. And, and those sites again? Are freeshafer.com. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Angela. No, you go ahead. <laughs> okay, so, ahead, so it's freeshafer.com, F-R-E-E-S-C-H-A-E-F-F-E-R.com. You'll find that music video that we showed earlier. You'll find links to purchase the song. You'll find letters from Schaefer. You'll find his entire story the, in detail from beginning to end and, and documentaries that will blow your mind and just really piss you off. Um, and you can find me at jordanpagemusic.com. Um, again, links to purchase the music and to watch the video. And, and I, have, I have a lot of other very liberty-minded uh, type songs as well about all kinds of subjects. But... Schaefer Cox is, is number one right now and is going to be for a while. And I just, you know, I'm really, we're just really working hard to, to, to raise public awareness. So yeah, again, freeshafer.com, please consider signing up for the email list and, and donating to the legal defense fund. And we just thank everybody so much for listening. Awesome. Thank you. And, and Angela, do you have, um, is there a, is there another website for Schaefer's angels or is, is that the, no, no, it's okay. just the same one. Okay, got it. Yeah, that's the website. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yep. Okay, well, it's been great having you both on. I think that was a lot of really, really great information. Um, and if you're following this, you know, go check out the websites and and um, you know, let's let's see what we can do here. Um, oh, someone just put freeshafer.com in the in the links in the comments. And um, and yeah, Nancy's saying he just heard about uh, she just heard about this case and she's trying to wrap her head around this. And um, yeah, it, it is. It's it's crazy. 
All right. Well, um, that's it for today. Thanks. Thanks for coming on. And taxation is theft. Taxation is theft. Thank thanks, Dan. You. Thank you. Taxation is theft. Please, at least leave us alone in our living room. My job is to find the truth. Double the taxes. I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value. Triple the taxes. This is an IRS agent's dream. If you think that the capital will ever treat us fairly, you are lying to yourself. Beautiful, lovely taxes. Uh -oh. <laughs> Sorry, but I don't do taxes. Did you see the memo about this? The government is a greedy piglet. Just leave us alone. Do you know what Ralph just said? The roads. <laughs>